Welcome to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. We pray that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now, here's a message from Pastor Jim Cobray. Stand to your feet and let's go before the Lord as I get down on my knees. Jesus, help! <laughs> Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, giving you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. We thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Touch us, heal us, strengthen us, encourage us, guide us, guard us, direct us, and motivate us to be all that you would have us to be. And Lord, we'll give you the praise, glory, and all the honor. How good it is to be in the house of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Bless all the churches in the Inland Empire that are preaching and hearing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even around the world, bless those that are watching by live stream right now. If you're home watching, we want you blessed. We just speak a blessing over you and your families. We love you so much for wherever you're at in the world. And Father, bless these churches and we'll give you the praise, give you the glory, give you the honor. Now, Lord, we ask that you, Holy Spirit, would cause the word of God to become alive on the inside of us. And God will give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, with a great big shout, we all say... Amen. Okay, dude, sit down. How to be successful. Really kind of an interesting title because everybody wants to be successful one way or the other. Success is defined by everybody differently. Maybe a person over here says success is someday I'm going to own my own house free and clear because I've lived all my life in a rented house. I've never had a house that's mine. And I'm believing God, and I'm telling you, when that happens, I'm going to feel very successful and very privileged. Maybe someone on this side of the auditorium says it like this, a bit different. Success to me is having a family that is together and in love with the Lord, and having just a husband that loves me or a wife that cares about me and loves me. And that would be more than I could ever imagine. Maybe somebody in other sections of the church might say that success for them is to accomplish some things in life that they never dreamt they could do or go further than their parents went. You know, that's always a feeling for everybody is that we feel better about ourselves if we go further in life than our parents. Success is a funny word, but success is a word that's very common to God. If you read your Bible, God wants you successful. Wants you successful in that marriage. Wants you successful with your children. Wants you successful with your finances, dreams, and vision. Wants you successful with your business. Wants you successful with your house. Wants you successful in every area of your life. All you have to do is read Genesis, first chapter, find out that God didn't take Adam and Eve and place them in a rock garden didn't place them out in the desert where there was no water, no plants, and starvation, and cactus, and Gila monsters. God placed them in a garden. And in that garden was anything and everything they could ever imagine to exist. Probably never existed so much off the garden. Probably, and it's just a probably now, I'm not giving you doctrine. This is just kind of my way of thinking, but let me tell you how it is. A probably existed off of the very presence of God. You know, God who is life in his presence is life. And most likely they were so close to God that they didn't have to eat anything or do anything. Just the presence of God brought life to their existence. Most likely. We'll find out when we get to heaven. Everybody's got a different concept of success. It's really fascinating. Everybody's got a different depth of success or a different evaluation or want of success of some kind. Success is very, very simple. First thing you've got to do and realize is that God himself wants you successful. Went to the cross and paid the price that you would be not a loser nor a failure, now down and out, discouraged or frustrated, but he really went to the cross to set you free so you could do some things so that you can ultimately in your life realize that God has made you successful. 
in every area of your life. You want that and you know it, or you wouldn't be connecting yourself with God. You want that, you know it, you need it, you wouldn't be connecting with God if you didn't desire to be successful. Whatever area it is, I'm not talking about just monetary success. That would be cheap and shallow. God goes way beyond money. Even though some of you would say to yourself, man, if I just had a little more, I'd be pretty successful. I understand that. And can I tell you something? God wants to get that to you. The other day when I was reading the Word of God, it just kind of jumped out at me. I was here a number of months back in, in um, the book of Joshua. And I want to take you there tonight. And instead of having points like point one, point two, point three, point four, which we always do to organize our thinking so we can get the very most out of the Word of God, which makes it easy for us to understand and clear for Bible teaching. I just want to discuss with you about three or four verses. And I want to share with you some principles in the Word of God. But first, before I take you to Joshua in the first chapter, you might as well turn there in your Bible, Joshua the first chapter. Let me do this. Let me explain that the children of Israel were brought out of captivity. You know that. They were in captivity for some 400 years in Egyptian bondage. The Pharaoh of, in the Egyptian armies kept them poor, broke down. They were disgusted. They were frustrated. They'd have anything. They were begging God. Here comes Moses. You know the story. Leads them out of captivity into a place that was hopefully they were going to go to, which was the promised land. There in the promised land, it could be anything. It's their place of success is what it was telling us was fruit bigger than you can imagine. It's filled with milk and honey and filled with all the abundance of wealth because God wants again to take his people to this place that is great for the people because God cares about you and me. And so they decide to go check out the promised land and you know the story, there are 12 spies go out, check it out. They come back and 10 of those 12 spies have a horrible, horrible statement there. You know, they're just totally frustrated. They, 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 they see themselves as grasshoppers. They see life like they're going to fail and they see themselves as being annihilated by the giants that are in the land. Which really tells us a lot. Before some of the promises that God's made for you in your future, there will be giants in the land. Giants in the land are there to do one of two things. It'll either distract you and keep you from ever going into the promised land, or it'll build encouragement and faith inside of you so that you can go into the promised land and be stronger than you ever were before you ever went in. Giants, oftentimes, those problems, those trials, those pressures that stop you from going forward are there for a reason, and they filter out, if you will, all negativity, filter out all discouragement and doubt and unbelief. They filter out all fear, and if you keep going forward, you'll be amazingly successful. The children of Israel didn't do that. The children of Israel complained and sided with the ten evil spies that gave a false report. Two, Caleb and Joshua, were the only two that came along and said, we can take this land, God's on our side, we can do it with God, let's go. But the children of Israel wouldn't go. And for most of us, we understand this, the entire generation, let me say it again, the entire generation that doubted God and were afraid of the giants had to die off in the wilderness without ever experiencing what God wanted to give them in order for the next generation to come up with faith and take the promised land filled with milk and honey. God was faithful. God's faithful with his promises whether you take them today or take them tomorrow, but you're going to have to take them a certain way in faith and believing God. And so this whole entire generation dies off, and here we find Joshua getting ready. Remember the two guys, Joshua and Caleb, were the only two that were going to go into the promised land. The rest of them all died off. And here's Joshua now. Moses is gone, and he's the new leader to take the children of Israel into the promised land. And God says something to him. And I think what God says to him, he says to every single one of us, 
How do I know that? Because it's been preserved for thousands of years. How do I know that? It's because it's been protected for thousands of years so that you and I could look into what they did that was wrong that kept them from the promised land and we can look into how it is that we're going to take our promised land. There's what God has for you. There is, if you will, success ahead of you. And God says you're not going to get the success because you're smart and pretty. You're not going to get the success because you're sociably acceptable. You're not going to get the success because you had good grades in school. You're going to get success because you follow the pattern that God has laid out for each and every one of us, which, by the way, doesn't matter if you're a big guy or a little guy. Doesn't matter if you're a tall person or short person. Doesn't matter if you're a white person or black person or brown person. Doesn't matter whether you're educated or doesn't, isn't educated. Doesn't matter about any of that. Doesn't matter whether you're cool or not cool, whether you can read good or not read good. It's not based on your mathematics ability, not based on your intellectual ability. It's all based on whether or not you can simply follow God. And if you follow God, can I say this to you the right way, then there is where success comes from. Let's take a look at the words together, if you will. Let's go to Joshua in the first chapter. And let's start in verse number six. And as I read, I'm going to read through verse number nine. And then I'm going to come back and underline some of the important points. We're going to talk about them just so that you'd get a better picture of this. We were there not too long ago, but we're going to go a little deeper this time than we've ever gone. And I think you're going to see some new truths about yourself that you need to see in order for you to be the successful person that God wants you to be. Isn't that cool? How simple is that? And may I say this to you? It is very simple. It's a simple formula for success. Sometimes waiting for such deep revelation, deep things. With God, it's got to be simple because you know why? Because God wants me successful and I'm not a deep person. I'm a simple person. So if you're a simple person in here and you don't know that maybe you're not the smartest, maybe you didn't get the greatest grades, I want you to know something, you're on a level playing field with God, and God wants to do some great things, and here it is, a simple formula for success. Verse number, let me read through it, and then I'm going to come back to verse number six. Be strong and of good courage, verse number six says, for the people you shall divide as an inheritance the land in which I swore to their fathers, given them. Verse seven, only be strong and of very courageous that you may observe and do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. and Do not turn it into the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. Verse number eight. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate it day and night that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success. I have not commanded you, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Whatever it is you desire tonight, whatever it is that you find success in tonight, I want you to listen to the simple formula to find and obtain success. It's found right in the word of the Lord. Let's take a look at it again. We'll go to verse number six. He says these words, be strong and of good courage. In fact, he says this three times in four verses. If you'll notice in verse number seven, only be strong and very courageous. And then once again in verse number nine, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. He's trying to make a point that in order for you to be successful, you're going to have to do something. Two things. You're going to have to be strong and you're going to have to be courageous. And that's the breakdown for most people is right there. When you read that, you think 
I know what I have to do. I'll, I'll be strong and I will muster up the energy. I will muster up the courage. I will get a backbone. I'll get tough. I'll get active in this thing. And here God is making a statement. And the statement he's saying is be strong and of good courage. But you and I have got to understand, and it's so important for us, that we never become strong or have good courage in our own ability. You were never made by God. Your DNA, when God made you from the dust of the ground, you were made in your DNA to find your strength in God and from God and your courage in God and from God. And oftentimes what we do is we look at a verse like that, put it back up if you will, in verse number seven, and we see be good, be strong and, and of good courage, and we find ourselves saying, I've got to get tough with myself. I've got to be strong. I've got to have great courage. Can I tell you something? Having and being strong and have great courage comes from God, not from you. And when it comes from God, it's successful, but when it comes from you, you it's like a catch-22. It voids out the very power of God. And a lot of times Christians try to muster up the energy themselves. Trying to be strong. I know I'll just, you know, stiff lip it all. Just, I'll just get in there and grow a backbone. I'll just get in and have some courage. I'll fight harder. Can I tell you something? If that was true based on your ability, then this would never be based on God's anointing. Because your ability is different. Every one of you, some of you can be tough. Some of you can be courageous. Some of you can stand strong. There's some of you can't stand strong. There's some of you can't even muster up a little bit of courage. So that does it mean that then God comes along and he's only making a statement, those that can be strong can be blessed and have their you know, promises made and, and enter into the promised land. Only those that can be courageous, only those that are really courageous make it. That's like God coming along saying, if you're educated, really educated, you go to heaven. That means it voids out all the stupid people that weren't educated. God is not a respecter of people. God's not looking for you, never has since Adam and Eve, ever looking for your strength or your courage. Your strength and your courage has got to not come from your ability, but come from your relationship. Let me say it again. Your strength and your courage cannot come from your ability, but comes from your relationship with God. Are you following me? If your strength, because have, have, maybe you've been tied up, maybe you've been addicted to drugs or alcohol or pornography or something like that, and you tried and you tried to try to break it, and you just can't, your strength isn't going to break it. That's why God gives us the Holy Spirit that gives us the power to do it. It's never going to be in your ability. You can try all you want to make it work. It won't work. One man said this week who died, who was a great comedian, a great actor, an icon in Hollywood. He made this statement, I have a hard time. I can't deal with my demons. Guess what? You become a Christian. First thing we teach you at this church is how to deal with your demons. And then we teach you how to do this so that you can live a successful life, not based on your strength, not based on your courage, but his strength and his courage. <laughs> Philippians 4.13, just pop it up on the overhead, makes a cool statement. Philippians 4.13, if you got your Bible, you ought to write that down. In Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Do you guys have it in the back room? Did we forget to put that up? That's okay. So sorry. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. One more time because I don't have it on the overhead. Stop thinking about what it just said. I can do some things. No, I can do all things. How? Through Christ. How? He's my strength. So when God makes a statement, listen to the statement. He says, be strong and of good courage. He's not waiting for you to get tough. He's not waiting for you to grow a backbone. Uh-uh. He's waiting for you to hook into him and draw your strength from him. Because he says, I can do all things who, with Christ 
who strengthens me. Every day I get out of bed and I make this statement, God, I, I, I don't know how I'm gonna make it through the day, but I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. Holy Spirit, this is the time you're the comforter. This is the time for you to strengthen me to get up and do something. And I'm relying on your strength, not my strength. Because if I'm relying on my strength, I'm only gonna go so far. But if I'm relying on his strength. So when God makes a statement, be strong and of good courage, he's not talking about you mustering up the courage and mustering up the strength in your own power and ability and intellect and, 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 uh, uh, and your coolness. He's waiting for you to tap into him. And Paul writes it like this. He says, in my weakness, I am made strong. Because in his weakness, he found that God becomes strong. And so we actually get our strength when we're weak and we count on God, we trust in God. Has anybody ever been weak in a situation? Ever tried to do something, haven't, come on, be honest. Ever tried to do something, haven't been able to do it? It's because you're trying in your own power, dummy. You're not gonna make it. How many times do you have to try before you realize you can't make it? You gotta get full of the things of God and his power helps you to do it because it's, you know, be strong and of good courage, that strength and courage comes from God. I can do all things through Christ who does one thing, strengthens me. Wow, isn't that powerful? I've only gone to verse six, let's go. Verse six, back to Joshua one. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land in which I had sworn to their fathers and given them. You ever notice that God makes a promise and it's good today, tomorrow, and forever, because God doesn't change. Ever notice that when one person fails in the promise, there'll be someone else that picks it up? Can I make a statement to you? You don't want to fail so someone else picks it up. You want to learn this so that you can be successful. And I'm going to be successful because God strengthens me to be successful. I don't know how to get the family right. I don't know how to get the wife right. I don't know how to get my boss right. I don't know how to own the business. I don't know how to make a business. I don't know how to buy a house. I don't know how to own a house. I don't know how to make business adventures. But guess what? God who strengthens me, guess what? That's where my strength comes from. Is that cool? And that's what he's talking about here. But he goes on and he makes this statement, verse number seven. Here's the most important word in all of this. Verse seven, the first word there says only. I don't know if you guys in the back room could color that word instead of it being like all the rest. But the word only says, here's the simplicity of today's message. You only have to be strong and a very good courage. <laughs> That's the whole thing of the whole verses. And we're going to talk about everything else that you do, but you do because you're strong and of good courage. Yeah. So the word only there comes up and it says, only thing, simplest message on how to succeed is the word only. Only. Didn't say only and then da, ba, 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 do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Only is simple as this. Only means only be strong and of good courage. If I'm strong and of good courage and everything else, he says, I can do. Is anybody listening? He says, and then he comes along, that you. In other words, be strong and of good courage. You're very you're very courageous, that you may observe and do according to all the law. See the word law up there? It's not talking about 10 commandments. You know, we're Christians. This is New Testament. When we see the word law, a lot of people think it's 10 commandments, Old Testament stuff. It's not about 10 commandments. It's about the word of God. When God speaks, when you see the word law there for us, it really means when God says the word, that's it. And he says this, so that you may observe and do according to all the word of God in which Moses, my servant, commanded you. All that Moses said, you could do that. Now, someone says, well, how do I do that? According to my courage and according to my standing strong. Which brings me to seven. It says, do not turn, this is an interesting part. Do not turn it to the right hand and to the left. I used to think that that meant stays focused, wouldn't you? Don't turn to the right, don't turn to the left, stay focused. But if I'm strong in God and my strength comes from God, 
He's telling me, don't let your right hand get you off track and don't let your left hand get you off track. Here's what he's saying. It's not that what you do that gets you success. It's what God does that gets you success. And oftentimes we put our success on what we have accomplished instead of what he will accomplish. And when you, listen to this, find success in what you have accomplished, it only lasts for a little while. But when you find success in what he has accomplished through you, it lasts forever. In other words, there's got to be a fulfillment in your life. Listen closely, listen closely. At the end of your life, God wants you to be fulfilled. You will never be fulfilled by what your right hand or your left hand does, which is saying the physical. You will only be fulfilled by what God does, by being strong and of good courage in God. See, what the world is, is around us all the time. How many times have I stood on this platform when we've seen singers kill themselves that were the most talented singers you have ever heard in your life? How about great actors? How about these, this guy that played the Joker? And I mean, what a phenomenal actor. How about one of the most talented people I've ever seen in my life? It was Robin Williams. Why is it that with all their money, with all their success, all their finances, as great as they were, icons in the business, you cannot deny their greatness in the world. They kill themselves. Because it's success is not based, if you don't get this, you won't get anything. Success is, cannot be based on what your right hand does and your left hand. You were never made that way. And if your success comes from your right hand or your left hand, at the end of your life or somewhere towards the end of your life, you will say, is that all there is? Because you haven't found your fulfillment in Christ. And the only way you'll ever find fulfillment in life is not by the material things that your right hand gets or your left hand. You will find fulfillment in life based on your relationship with the King of glory. Come on, somebody. And he makes this statement. He says this, that you may prosper. And then I love these words, wherever you go. Doesn't matter where you go. God's with you. Someone said, I just want the right business. Can I tell you something? The right business it starts with God. And then it's God that makes it work. God that opens the doors that no man can open, close doors, no man can close. Comes along, wherever you go, you will prosper. Verse number eight. Let's take a look at it. This book of the law shall not depart. Now, in other words, I've got to, may I say this to you? If I'm going to be strong and of good courage, simple, simple, simple message, for my success, right? I'm going to have to be consistently strong and good courage. You know why? Because the world comes at me constantly. My own failures come at me. All of the world, the pressures and all the un questions that come up in my life. In order for me to be strong and of good courage, it isn't strong for a moment. It's consistently strong. And Moses was consistently strong. And Joshua that followed him was consistently strong in his relationship with God. That's why he led the children of Israel into the promised land. The others weren't consistently strong. They may have, have you ever known anybody like this? They're strong one day and down the next. Uh, in order for me to be strong and of good courage from God and do this successfully to get to success, I'm gonna to have to be consistent in my strength and good courage. How do I do that? I keep it in my mouth and I keep it in my mind. What you have in your mouth and what you have in your mind, look at what it says. Do not depart from, now listen, he says this, and shall not depart from your mouth, but shall meditate in your mind in it day and night that you may observe and do according to that which is written. How in the world can I do that? Only by having it in my mouth. I'm speaking it all the time to myself. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and I'm thinking it all the time. If you're up against a problem right now that's knocking you off your faith, if you're up against a problem that'll cause you to be weakened, if you're up against a situation or condition in your life, you know what I'm saying, that the pressures of life are coming against you, causing you not to be strong and of good courage, but to be uh, of, of discouragement and also to be weak, 
Guess what? Then you're going to have to beef up on what's in your mind that you allow to continue because this is the arena of faith is what you think. Meditate, know what it says, and speak it from your mouth. What are you speaking out of your mouth? If you're speaking death and failure and I'm not going to make it and it's no good and my mind is going there, it won't be long before I am weak and discouraged and I've given up on my faith and I'm a double-minded man. James says a double-minded man it will get nothing. May I say this to you? You'll never get anything out of this. This is a simple thing on how to be successful. You're going to have to find your success in the power of God, his strength, and you're going to have to find success in his encouragement and his courage. And therefore, you're going to have to keep that in your mouth and keep that in your mind. Verse number nine. Go to verse number nine. Have I not commanded you? And all of a sudden, he's starting to repeat himself again. Why? He's reminding you three times. He's trying to make a statement three times in four verses. He says, be strong and of good courage. What's he saying? Be strong and of good courage is primary importance. If you don't understand what strong and good courage is, you will try to do it in your own strength. He reminds us again three times in four verses. He comes along and he says this. Do not be afraid. In other words, listen, if you've got it in your mind, and you're speaking it out of your mouth, fear's got to go because you're full of faith. And he says this, nor be dismayed, for the Lord God is with you. And I love these words, two times wherever you go. Did you know back, what was it, verse seven? Put up verse seven, wherever you go. Remember we had that? Uh, B, give me B. Wherever you go. You'll be successful and prosperous wherever you go. Then he comes and reminds us, verse number nine, pop up verse number nine again. Look at the end of it. Because God is with you wherever you go. Now here's the point. The point is, today all you have to do is get your strength every day from God. Some of you have to get it every hour. You have to keep it in your mouth and keep it in your mind so you can do because you do because you're strong and full of courage. You will not do if you're not strong and full of courage. And your strength comes from God because all things are possible to him that believes. And I can do all things through Christ who, who, who strengthens me. My strength is not in who I am. It's not in my looks. It's not in my intelligence. It's not in my coolness. It's not in my job selection. My strength, it doesn't come from my education. My strength doesn't come from how well I sing or dance or act or a comedian to the world. My strength comes from God. And if it comes from the right hand or the left hand, you're in trouble. It won't last long. And you'll say, whatever there is, I can't handle my demons. And the only thing you have left for yourself, because you haven't found God, is death. And saints of God, you don't need to go there. And that's the beauty of what God has for all of us. A simple remedy, a simple formula for you and I to follow. Every day, find the strength for that day from him and the courage to face the day in the midst of problems from him. Every day, some of you has to be every hour. It used to be every hour for me until I got to the place where I could just do it in the morning and do it at night and still feel courage and strength throughout the whole day. Where are you getting your courage from in order for you to be successful? Where are you getting your strength from in order for you to be successful? Is it your bank account that your right hand or your left hand gave to you? Is it your job? Is it your boss? Is it all the favor you have at work? None of that will ever make you successful. Success comes from a relationship. does not come from your right hand or your left hand. If God spoke to you today, come on, give the Lord a great big praise. Isn't that good? Let's just do this before we go any further into the next song. There's those of you that are out there right now, and you know you live an unsurrendered life to Jesus. And you need to surrender that life, your life. You need to give him all of your heart and 
give him all of your life. And that's what the Bible describes in John, the third chapter. It's Jesus speaking. He says, you must be born again. In order for you to get to heaven, it's really, someone said one time, it doesn't cost anything. It does cost something. It costs you you. It costs you you. You're going to have to give up you and surrender. But stop and think about what you're giving up. You're giving up a life of problems and a life of trial and a life of pressure. You're giving up a life of uncertainty. You're never going to know where to go and what to do and how to do it. But tonight, God is beckoning you home, drawing you near so that you can surrender all of your heart and give him all of your life. Be born again, headed for heaven and denying your presence in hell. Instead of just singing this song, for many of you in here tonight, before we go any further, it's just time to surrender. You say, well, Pastor Jim, how do I do that? How do I do that? How do I surrender? I want you to do what Jesus says to do. Jesus says, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. But then he goes on and he says, but if you deny me, I'll deny you. Wow. So I want you that you know you're one of those people that need to surrender and you haven't given it all to him yet. You're holding back. You know he's Lord. You celebrate Easter. You celebrate Christmas. You don't have a problem with Jesus being the Savior, but you haven't yet given him all of your heart. And that's why, truly why you're finding so much trouble in the path that you're walking. And until you give him all of your heart and give him all of your life, I really don't believe you're gonna make it. And tonight, you have a divine appointment with God. God brought you here for this very moment that you would be wise enough to hear this, get out of your seat, get your coat, purse, sweater, Bible, your stuff. Get out of your seat and meet me right here in front. That's all you have to do. I mean, how simple is that? Jesus had to walk up Mount Calvary, a beaten, bloody mess, the Son of God, creator of the heavens and the earth, where trillions of angels worshiped him. He comes and becomes a man and he walks a beaten path to you and for you. You can get out of your safe seat right now for a moment and you can come forward and give God what he wants, a total heart of surrender. Just get out of your seat and come. Let's sing that one more time as they come. Sing that one more time as they come. I surrender. Come on home. I surrender. Just come on home. Just come on home. You won't get embarrassed. You can walk a safe aisle for Jesus. Just bring a friend if you need to. Just nudge your friend and say, come on, I'll go with you if you need to go. I'll go. Just say, come on, let's go. Take the bold step and come home. Well, thank God you guys have come. Real quick, look up at me for a moment, all you in the front. Thank God, thank God, thank God you were wise enough to come. Over here is my friend, Pastor Joel. He's a really good guy. No weird stuff goes on. You know how you go to a church sometimes for the first time and you think maybe they're weird. Maybe they're, you know, they're gonna roll down the aisles or do goofy, crazy, stupid stuff. Believe me, we don't do that stuff here. No weird stuff goes on at all. He's just gonna pray with you to invite Jesus into your heart, give you some free stuff. Is that okay? We love free. And then let you come right back to your seat right back where you're seated. You can come right back here and sit down and listen to the message and know that you're right with God. Tonight, you're gonna to be free, washed clean, and have a future with the Lord Jesus Christ. We're gonna teach a little subject tonight 
listen to this, on how to be successful, how to succeed in life. You need to know how simple it is, and it's great. And we'll let you come right back into the church service for that. So just make a left turn and follow Pastor Joel right over this way. Hey, you just heard that altar call. You just wanted to give God all of your heart and all of your life. Now let me lead you simply in a prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and listen to me and go ahead and close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. I'll go slow. You repeat them. Say these words. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son and that you sent him for me and that he died for me on that cross at Calvary. I believe that his blood washes away my sins, that I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. I receive you now and forever as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm going to turn from sin, and I'm going to turn with all of my heart and all of my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Let it be known in heaven as well as upon the earth that I am born again. I'm a child of God, that I'm saved, and I'm headed for heaven and denying my presence in hell. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive forevermore. Love you so much. God bless you guys. Everybody just say amen and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So talk to you later. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. If this message spoke to you, please share it with us. We'd love to hear from you. You can find more information at www.rockchurch.com.